My name is Nate Bourne, and I teach at Broadview Middle School. I teach 8th grade science, 6th and 7th grade STEM. So for this video, we're going to talk about how to measure uh, the fossilized shark teeth using the measurement card. And uh, for this video, we're going to go ahead and use this, which is a carcaroniform, probably a lower from something like a dusky shark. And uh, anything smaller than this, you might actually want to use a document camera to show up on your, um, on your smart board or on your projector screen, and then maybe on a piece of paper, trace it and do the measurements. Um, this card is going to be kind of tough for some of the really small teeth that you're going to find, which um, there's going to be a lot of those. So we're taking the eight, same A, B, C, D, E measurements with this tooth, uh, and you can use either of these two uh, rulers that are here. And so measurement A is going to be the lowest parts of the lobe. And you always want to measure the, um, the, the lobular or labial side, which is the, the outside of the tooth. And you can usually tell that because the lingual side or the tongue side, the inside of the tooth, has this kind of this bulge or this protrusion. Um, so you want to measure the flat side or the back side of the tooth. And you're just going to lay it on there and write down your measurements on a measurement card. So we have our A measurement here is 9 millimeters. And this is the real measurement. We're not converting a photo. You would also be putting this into the online uh, Google form if you're using that. Then we're going to measure B, which is going to be the widest part of the root, which on this lining it up is 11 millimeters. Measurement C is the line straight across where the cusp meets the root on either side. And this is going to be a very similar measurement on this tooth. Uh, that is 9 millimeters again. Measurement D is the depth of the cusp itself. And so the best way to do that is to lay the tooth on the zero line going up what would be the, the y-axis of this if it was a graph. And if you match up the two spots where C is, where the cusp and the tooth meet, you can then project that down. What you have to remember is that on some teeth, the root will actually come uh, down away from that line. And you need to subtract that off from your final measurement because we're just measuring uh, the cusp itself. On a tooth like this, which is much bigger than you'll probably find, you can see that the root protrudes down into the cusp area pretty deep here, and that would cause uh, a mismeasurement of the cusp length, so we need to do that. That happens a little bit on this tooth. So the cusp actually extends down to 8 millimeters, but it's 2 millimeters. Uh, the cusp doesn't actually start until 2 millimeters here. So 8 minus 2, your D measurement is going to be 6 millimeters. And this is probably going to be very difficult for some students. So some extra practice on this, especially on the paper examples, might be really good for helping them get that measurement correct. And then the last measurement is the E measurement, which is going to be the longest uh, distance from a lobe, kind of the bottom of the root, to the tip. And this tooth curves to the back just a little bit, to the posterior of the, the mouth, and so that's going to automatically be our longer measurement. So I can then lay, once again, right on the ruler here, and we are at 12 millimeters. And then the last thing we need to do is we just need to fit it to the best circle that's here. And so sliding the tooth around, we can't really fit it in the nine millimeter. We're closer on the 10. We're still sticking out of the 11 here and Ooh, even outside of the 12. So the best fit for this tooth is the 13 millimeter circle. It's still inside it a little bit, but it doesn't quite fit into the 12. And on the Google form, there's a spot, the sixth measurement is which circle does your tooth fit into.